Welcome back to the show. Let's go to line number four. Mike, you're on the air. Hey, good morning, Paddy. A beautiful morning it is. Not too bad. Yes. No, Paddy, I, I called up, the, and hopefully I'll get there given the time to speak about green energy, black energy. But uh, just before I do that, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm that mad here this morning that uh, hopefully I can control my thoughts and, and, and get to the green energy. But there's something that I, I, I got to get out first. And uh, I've been bombarded with emails and phone calls and stuff. And it's, it's a sad story. It's a really a sad story. And these, these are coming from the people that are being forced into these town hall meetings the corporations they don't know, sitting across the table from snake oil salesmen that don't have the answers because we don't have no legislation, we don't have no rules to the game. And and the information that I've received is is, is devastating. You know, this, this, what are we even this, talking about? About the, the, the people, with the, the wind turbine projects and what's going to happen in their communities and the town hall meetings that, the, that the, you know, that, that Andrew Fury has, forced them to go to uh, to get answers when, when there's no answers, you know? And it's, it's really sad. It's really sad. Who's forcing you know, someone to go? Are, uh, I'm not sure what that means. Who's forcing anyone to go to a town hall? Well, that's the only way they can get answers on what's going to happen. Like the poor, the poor people down there are going to these meetings and they're not getting no answers because there's no rules to the game. They don't know what to expect and, uh, and, and the amount of towers and, uh, and the watersheds and everything else and stuff. And, and they've got legitimate questions and, and it's not getting answered. And, and uh, you know, the premier is not there. He's hiding in the bushes. And he, he got to address the serious concerns of the people of this province. You know, the, come out of the bushes. This, this was your baby. And, uh, and go down and see these people. And uh, because everything is left to the proponent, to the proponent, to the proponent, to the proponent. That was environmental assessment. And, and these people have some serious concerns, and, and my heart goes out to them. My heart goes out to them. It's, it's you know, and, and this is why this, this, these projects should have been taken so slowly, public referendum, uh, all the stakeholders involved, and it should have been done uh, with a, on a clear table, on an open table, not in secrecy. And, and now it, it's, it's not, it's, it's not uh, the Cadbury secret that people are upset, worried, concerned, and we're doing it after the fact, after the fact. But uh, I just had to get that out there, and, and I, I'll put one more plea out there. I, uh, I want the media to get out there and, and get these stories and find out what's happening. And I, uh, it's good journalism and, and two sides of the story. You know, it's, we got this is the most serious thing that's affecting our province today. And I, I, I see Andrew Fury going around to all these other photo shoots, but I don't see him going out and addressing. Uh, the 500 uh, the people that's in this province. And that's got to change. It's got to change. It's got to change. You know, uh, we're not putting in sod farms here. We're putting in thousands of these turbines, hydrogen plants, storing uh, hundreds of thousands of cubic meters of, of ammonia, you know, tons and tons of it. These people deserve answers. They deserve answers. And this is Andrew Fury's baby. And he got to come out of the bushes uh, he wanted it. He brought it upon us, you know. And uh, he's got to come out and address these people's concerns because it's not going to go away. It's not going to go away. They're not just going to go in with the bulldozers and the flatbeds and the excavators. It's not going to go away, you know. And I wouldn't if it was if it was you're around your home, Patty, or anybody's home or whatever. It would be the same thing. But I don't know here on the Avalon if we forgot what's going to happen in, in Central Newfoundland and Bjorn. And Codroy Valley and uh, Port of Port. It's if you look at the pictures of the landscape that we got in this province and what they're going to do to it. My God, it's disturbing. It's dis- and, it's, and it's for money. And I, I'll leave it at that. Uh, if I get a chance now, I'll go to the green energy because I want to try and keep my train of thought. Sure. When people talk about a public referendum, because on one hand you say people can't get the information and the answers to their questions, and then also saying no. we should have a referendum. A referendum based on lack of information sounds like a bit of a fool's errand to me, isn't it? Well, maybe we should have had that referendum prior when these projects were being discussed, prior to be lifting the wind moratorium. That, that's when this all should have been, you know, if this was done honestly and openly, that's how it should have proceeded. 
listen, do, 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 do the people of this province even want these hydrogen projects? Do the people want uh, 3,600 uh, foot towers across the province? Don't we deserve? Don't we deserve that? Don't we deserve that? Rather than this, this is this is not a small project. This is from Port of Bass to the Isthmus, from Port of Bass to the Isthmus. This project, no, is. and the only people that weren't involved was us. It's not from Port of Bass to the Isthmus. What does that even mean? That's where these towers will be going. From I'm from Port of Bass to the Isthmus, right across this province. And you, you look at look at the land that was uh, projected for it, and where these four projects are going. And I don't think people like people under this guise of green energy, and as well as black energy, painted green is what it is. And and I'll get to that if given the time, and I'll make it. Well, let's get to it quickly, then. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So first, I, I just want to. Uh, you know, we got gaslighting, duping, propaganda, and, and all that stuff. And then we got facts, reality, truth, and certainty. Well, here's what the government is. They're very poor on the facts, but they're great on propaganda. Because, uh, such as? The duping. Pardon? Such as? Okay, such as. So we're doing this in the sake of green energy and carbon emissions. And we're going to save the environment and all that. And that cannot be no further from the truth, Pat. How so? No further from the truth. How so? And I'll tell you why. Okay. Give me the time. First thing, uh, what do I want to take first? I got a couple of notes here. Okay, the tankers that are going to come over from from Germany. It's roughly eight thousand nautical miles return trip. They'll burn. They'll burn two point five million gallons of a lower grade than Bunker C. Actually, I, I, I not fails. I can fails to remember that grade. But they'll burn two point five million gallons. They'll be at sea, depending on the sea conditions, twenty days, twenty five days, or whatever, and stuff in that there. But they'll burn on a return trip. So they're going to leave Germany 8,000 nautical miles. Now, that is even raises a question itself. Why? Why wouldn't he put it in Germany? So they just cut down the transportation cost. Why wouldn't he put it over in their own land? And I'll tell you why. They don't have the pristine water that we got. So they're going to travel 8,000 nautical mile trip, and this will be on repeat. So depending on how many trips they do a year, they'll burn 2.5 million gallons. So the emissions from that is tons and tons of carbon, tons of carbon. So same thing that what happens when they ship oil all over the world. Same thing that happens when we ship all types of goods all over the world all the time. Oh, I, right? I agree. I agree. But uh, yeah, what I'm saying is uh, they're, they're coming to Newfoundland and we're doing it under the guise of green energy. So that alone, that alone is an attack on the environment. That alone is an attack on the emissions. But I, I'll just leave that. that. That's, that's, that's the tankers. But here's, here's the other thing that they've done. Okay, because we're almost out of time, so let's get let's get this one. Okay, so Holyrood up there emits 1. million tons of greenhouse greenhouse gas a year. It emits 1,200 tons of sulfur dioxide, and they're burning 8,000 barrels of bunker a day, which is so a bad it's one thing. One of the biggest polluters, one of the biggest polluters in all of North America, and this project has nothing to do with that. But it's nothing to do with decommission that and Muskrat Falls. It's is basically weather depending link and uh, regards to tr- troubles and stuff and that there electrical troubles, equipment trouble. But so that that link is not dependable. But here's where here's where it gets really crazy, Patty. Here's where it gets really crazy. So what what they've done with World Energy and I've read the documents. They've promised them. So we got Holyrood there. They've promised them, and we're getting pretty much maxed out carrying loads and rotating blackouts. But anyway, what they've done, what this government has done. And this is snake oil, too, because they don't even have it. My background is in electricity. Okay, come on, Mike. Make the point. Okay, so what they've done, they've given world energy a reserve on the grid of 10 megawatts a day up to 150 megawatts. Hang on, it gets crazier than that. So up to 600 gigawatts a year. So, But they've got to leave at a minimum of 10 megawatts on the grid. Well, I can tell you right now, and you can get people on from hydro. (laughs) None of that's been finalized, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, you can get people out from hydro and come in and they can tell you. And then this is only, this is 10 gigawatts that they're going to, uh, megawatts, 10 megawatts that's in reserve that's got to be left in reserve for world energy. So what this is going to do, and this is only one project, this is only one project, so all of them are going to need reserves of power. And so what that's going to do is actually put a demand, an increase of emissions from Holyrood because we've got, they're going to be have to run on max and then keep world energy. But it gets crazier. No doubt but that's not necessarily true either. <laughs> anyway, Pardon? that's not necessarily true either. 
Uh, well, I think it is true because uh, no. a 10 megawatt reserve, uh, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and I worked out in convoy chains. No, but that's not accurate either. Really... Pardon? That's not accurate either. There's well, only what's co- not accurate? well, you're saying that that demand is going to be 365. It's not. There's going to be times of the year where world energy may need to buy power from us, but that's not 365 days a year. It's simply not true. And then with the uh, provision of additional power, Hydro's looking at all kinds of options, including an eighth generating unit out at Bay to Spare. They're talking about potential for a 150 megawatt uh, diesel generator somewhere, possibly located near Holyworth. They're looking at all kinds of stuff. So world energy's demand is not 365 on our grid. It's just not not true. <laughs> But they got to have, the government has entered into a contract to have 10 megawatts a day in reserve. If, they, if needed at any time at all. So that 10 megawatts, the, the people that's handling the power in this province, got to make sure. And, and guess what? If World Energy needs that 10 megawatts and is not there, then guess who pays for it? We do. We do. Right? In that contract and stuff. You know, so, but, and the other thing about. Very you know, quickly, Mike, I have to go. Okay. The other thing about the green energy and stuff that there is like our bogs or peatlands are one of the best absorbers of carbon. And the amount of that that's got to be destroyed in the sake of green energy, it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. And then we'll go a little bit further. All these turbines that got, uh, uh, need rare metals, rare metals from all around the world, make them into generators and stuff and that they're rare metals. So that all got to be mined and come, coming from other different places and stuff. So we got the tanker. We got the power loads. We got all the rare metals and the parts and the cement and the rebar and everything else that's that's destroying our environment. And we're continuing to call it green energy. But and yeah, then we got ammonia contamination. But at the exact same time, people who have uh, big issues with mining components and some of that is exaggerated to the nth degree. Uh, but then they're still huge uh, supporters of the fossil fuel industry. It's just sort of a strange contradiction. Well, if, if you, if, but we're doing it under the guise of green energy, and we're not helping the environment. Actually, it, like, this, this is what people don't get. We are attacking the environment. We're attacking it. And, and, and then we're doing it for foreign countries. There's, there's absolutely the few jobs that's going to come out of this. There is a problem with the fact that it's not for domestic use. I think people will agree with that. Uh, Mike, I'm late for the break. Appreciate the call. Very good. And let's get out and get them stories looked after with these people and, and get the, uh, get the playing cards laid on the table. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Paddy. Thank you a lot. Okay, bye-bye.